Hello and welcome everybody. We continue today's Gambit guide series about the Black Mardimer Gambit and the second part. So, in the first lecture I explain you the main ideas of the sacrifice which was discovered by Blackmore and then developed by the right moves order by Emil Dimmer. So this is the actual position after knight f6 when white is sacrificing the pawn after f3. So once again I would like to remind you that in the Blackmore Dimmer Gambit usually white is trying to develop all his pieces. I mean of course white is trying to play for the development advantage. However, uh, it's a quite big difference from the open situation which we studied in the two knights defense or in the Danish Gambit, Evans Gambit. So the position here is quite closed and it's not so easy to find the serious target against uh, in, in the black's position and to organize the attack against the black skin is also not so easy. So definitely we have a lot of tactical opportunities in, in different tactical ideas. However, you have to be very strong player and to understand very good the idea of Black Mardimer Gambit in order to use your, I would say, not so big compensation for the sacrifice the pawn. I would like to start with a few games played by the inventor of this opening line, the Emil Dimmer. So he played it in 48 to 53. And he played some matches with the Klaus Loher and with the Ports. And he played in some tournament in Switzerland. The first game was played in 1948 against uh, Klaus Loher, which I would like to start with. So after e takes f3. So in the early development of the gambit, so white usually played queen takes f3, and this move used to be the main continuation in the black Mardimer gambit. On the later on, only later on, so knight takes f3, the most natural becomes just more popular in that line. So Queen takes d4, in the previous lecture we saw a few games played with this line after bishop e3. And a, one more short game after queen b4, alone castling and e6. Instead of e6 we already studied that bishop g4 is losing because of knight b5. Knight c6 is also going to, to be quite a difficult position for black after knight b5. So instead time black played e6 but even after e6 and knight b5 this is not so easy position for black so pawn on c7 is under attack queen e5 a3 so white is intending to attack the black's queen after b4 knight a6 b4 queen a4 but of course the position on the queen on a4 just cannot be called so good so it's quite dubious position for black. So white not only having the development advantage, but also his pieces are just very good placed when black's pieces are just very, very passive. Bishop d4, bishop e7, bishop b2, castling short side, and bishop c4 is just very, very difficult for black to, greet, to get rid of white's initiative. And after white, after one just one blunder c6 the game is finished immediately after knight c3 suddenly the queen is trapped so after taking a pawn on d4 and bishop e3 black also tested here to play queen g4 so quite logical con continuation it's trying to exchange the queens and with the two pawns up of course black just would be very very happy to trade the strongest, the most powerful piece on the board. So definitely white has to avoid and to play queen f2. And uh, this situation happened in, in the other game, played with the same openings, c6. Black is trying to avoid knight b5 ideas, but it was not so necessary. White played chip 